Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. We're back. Welcome to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick, and this is theCUBE. We're here at HP Discover. This is day two. We've done a number of HP Discovers over the years, and this year there's a particular emphasis on talking to the, to the customers, the IT practitioners, and, and the CIOs. We had Jason Cohen on yesterday, CIO of Omnicom. Bill Lukowski is here. He's the CIO of Metro Health uh, in Michigan. Bill, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, my pleasure. So tell us a little bit about Metro Health. You said it's a, about a $350 million organization. Yeah, know, we're, a, we're a healthcare system. However, we're, we're only one hospital. But in, in terms of healthcare, we're about a $350 million organization. That's small. But what's different about Metro is we have a huge emphasis on primary care. So we have multiple other uh, sites across West Michigan. We are more ambulatory, which is uh, outpatient, physician services, and so on, than we are anything else. But with that being said, we built a brand new uh, healthcare campus that we call the Metro Health Village, about a 200-acre uh, campus that has a brand new hospital, multiple other buildings, and it's designed for the healthcare of the future, which 10 years ago when we were designing it, truly is where we're at today with where uh, healthcare is going. So. The, the campus, so how, how many beds in the hospital? It's only a 208 bed hospital, but you got to remember, healthcare is going out and yeah. not in. So, so. It's, a, it's a small sort of mainspring of innovation that you then sort of export to the well, distributed locations? It or? is, I mean, we had the, uh, when we were designing this thing and even uh, strategizing it before we built it, we brought in the futurists and others that were predicting where healthcare was going. And we realized, and, and we knew back then, but it's so prevalent today, consumers, our customers, are the ones that are going to be making more decisions with their healthcare dollars because they're going to have to be paying more of it. And we knew that healthcare was going more ambulatory, more outpatient, so we needed to get ahead of this, and, if, and we needed to build a new hospital, so with that in mind, we just didn't build a replacement hospital. We built a healthcare village that was all about the future of healthcare. Yeah, I mean, as a consumer, that sounds very appealing, because we've all been inside, or most of us been inside of a hospital. It's, it's imposing, it's, it's sterile, it's just not a, comfortable place. What you're, you're saying, a couple hundred acres? <laughs> a couple hundred acres. We're, we're, uh, when, when all's said and done, we're going to have about 40 buildings on the campus. We probably have 20 now, and it's just continuing to uh, expand and so on. And a lot of these are like we have a cancer center, we have a health club, we have consumer stuff like a Starbucks and all, you know, restaurants. We have a hotel. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a community. And it's there not just for our patients, it's for families that are there, for their, their loved ones that are there for, uh, for a purpose. It's also there for the employees and for the physicians. It's a place that uh, thrives because we're there to, to really be a great experience for, for all the key stakeholders. Yeah, it sounds like a quite an experience. So Bill, talk, you know, one of the topics we always cover is, it, is innovation, right? Everybody's trying to spend less time keeping the lights on and more time innovating. And this sounds like a pretty innovative approach. I wonder if you could take us back as to kind of who initiated this and what were the drivers of, of taking this kind of progressive look forward to build this, this uh, I guess campus is probably the best word. Well, I would, I would say it begins with our CEO. He's been with Metro for 20 years. I've been there 18. He's been a, a key mentor of mine. I've been working with him for a number of years. But he's a visionary. And he gets out in front of it. He's a vision guy. Nothing is too small for Metro. I mean, we're small, but we know that we can get it done and achieve it. But it's all about what's best for our, our um, customer, what's best for our uh, patients, what's best for our families, and what's best for the community. And the innovation comes with thinking in the future, but getting ahead of it. So not only do we have a little bit of a competitive advantage, we have, um, we've, we've had the opportunity to bring technologies and other things to help enable this future. And it's really helped us because indeed, that's where healthcare reform is going. So, this is pretty innovative from my standpoint. It seems like you can move faster than some of the larger institutions. It's one right? of our advantages. Small has good and bad, has opportunity and challenge. The challenge is we don't have scale. So my cost, I only have 70 people in IT, although really IT is throughout the organization, so we're partnered with everyone across the organization. 
Um, but it gives us that, that uh, agility, that flexibility. We don't have a bureaucracy above us to make decisions. We move quick. We are very innovative compared to anybody, let alone a 200-bed hospital. Uh, we have been in virtualization in four generations of virtualization now. We're on the, the cutting edge of that. But we've, we've done it because it enabled this agility, it enabled this, this kind of experience, and we've utilized uh, as much of the technology as we could possibly do, even getting ahead of where technology tends to be. How has your information architecture changed as a result of this? When people talk about the future of healthcare, a lot of times it comes down to information, information access, privacy, things of that nature. What has been the, the, the info impact of this change? I'll go back to a key strategy that we put together back in uh, 2003. We stepped back and, and at that time we were using a lot of applications from multiple vendors. And we don't develop our own software for the most part. We, you know, we use uh, EMRs and other packages and revenue cycle stuff and so on from a lot of different vendors, or we did back in 2003. We stepped back and this was aligned more with where we're going with the vision. We said integration trumps uh, functionality. In other words, you have to have great functionality, but integration is what will enable the experience we're talking about. So we stepped back and we said, you know what, we need to find a new integrated uh, solution that brings all of our parts and pieces, which as you saw, we were expanding out together so it's seamless. And we ultimately ended up with the what is today the leading uh, EMR vendor out there, which was built completely for both ambulatory outpatient, uh, inpatient, to be an integrated platform, and that's what we use. So you're, you're physically, you're distributing, but your you're information assets, you're, you're integrating. Well, and, and I, I should probably point out, we also had the strategy that we had to go digital. So we had a lot of paper and pockets and, and so on. To, to really get care around a patient, that means your information needs to be around the patient. That means your application's got to be tied to, to a core and not in, in, in these uh, disconnects between the pockets of data that were in these other applications and in our, our paper charts. So we went digital. We, we had a strategy to invest in going digital. And uh, that's not just the EMR, that's the infrastructure to enable it. So you're there, essentially. You've got patient-focused yes. you know, da data records that, that people can access. That, right. That's nirvana for many places, so, Jeff. So, Bill, the other thing we talk about a lot with CIOs is this is this tug between you know kind of um, the, the technical side and, and keeping the lights on versus the business side and really being a business contributor to the organization. Talk a little bit about that in your role and how it, clearly you had some top level strategies that were being defined. You know, how have you been able to execute those via the technology? Is it business first, support by the technology, or well, it's, well, kind of here's our technology that stack that we got, and here's what we can do with it on the business side. We we do not have a separate IT strategic plan. Uh, I have been working with, like I mentioned, our, our CEO for uh, 18 years. Uh, through time, uh, he has uh, not only uh, appreciated but got very involved. In, in the appreciation of what technology can do for our strategies. And so we have a small executive group, it's about six of us, and we are all about strategizing and embedded in that is the, uh, the technology. So when we know that we have a strategy that's going to increase a certain service line in the hospital, or we have a strategy to, uh, to provide excellent primary care and integrate it all together, it's inherent that, that technology is embedded in that strategy. So our technology strategy is in all of our core strategies. So then talk about kind of the implementation. We have a lot of practitioners that like to watch the show. They love to hear from their peers. What are some of the just recent things you've been working on that are high priorities and what's coming up next that you're, uh, that you're getting excited about? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's never a dull moment. And <laughs> uh, you know, what's happening with any industry, but especially healthcare, is we are quickly uh, catching up and surpassing some other industries and being electronic, being digital, and so on. That means that everything we do uh, includes uh, information, it, it includes uh, being on, on uh, a note on our infrastructure, it means integration to our EMRs and all that other stuff. And that includes things like all the medical devices. So monitors with patients are integrated right with the EMR to give us real-time information. There are constant projects to improve and to, and to bring the latest technologies, let alone the IT stuff, right? The infrastructure to keep it current, 
the, uh, the applications and so on. So we never have a dull moment. Probably the most notable thing that we're working on right now is our virtualized desktop environment. We're okay. in our fourth generation of virtualized desktop. We use uh, VMware's VDI. We, use, uh, we just went with a brand new architecture with HP. We went with a, a complete flash three-par arrays for our, our and, and we've improved performance multiple times. I don't know, I don't have the metrics in front of me, but uh, we significantly improved performance, reliability, and it's, it's one of those factors that our end users are saying, wow. So w w the issue prior to putting in, so why did you bring in the all flash array? Was it just sort of your VDI infrastructure, boot storms, things of that nature were problematic? Oh, or? it's multiple things. I mean, uh, from a cost standpoint, it was very affordable. Uh, but from a performance, it's probably number one. Uh -huh. uh, we were uh, experienced complete growth in our VDI environment. And, and some things that we didn't take into account three and a half, four years ago when we had our previous generation implemented, was the, the onslaught of larger monitors and, and mobility and all the other things that tug, because we used VDI through all those devices, it tugged on the performance to the point where we had to improve that. And plus we're doing a lot of video now. So we had, we had to have an environment that's cutting edge and can handle all that uh, uh, has emerged in the last couple of years. And the all flash array obviously, as we were talking earlier before you came on about the, the impact of flash, and now the costs are comparable to high speed spinning disk, which is sort of an oxymoron if it's spinning, it, right. it ain't high speed. So your VDI infrastructure sounds like it supports this concept of uh, telemedicine, if I can use that term. You got distributed docs and they can yeah, I, access their Yeah, I would go even uh, broader than that. I would say that VDI and virtualization means that um, it enables anytime, anywhere for anything. And, and we, we have our, every single one of our users at Metro is on a virtualized desktop. So our endpoints are multiple things, but they're all running really in our data center. So your experience with the devices is comparable or equivalent to, or maybe even better than, my performance if I'm using my laptop. Is that right? In a lot of cases, but you get the other benefit of continuity. In other yeah. words, your desktop, your data, your applications that are still running at any time, you can connect to it real time and get right to it without delay. And we're talking like six seconds or less to just connect and be right on your desktop. Wow, it's like firing up my, uh, my laptop these days with the flash drive that's in it. <laughs> All right, how about the role of the CIO? Um, obviously, people are talking about CIO becoming more business oriented. It sounds like you were heavily involved in this transformation. Yeah, um, I, how's the I, role of the CIO changing? I've been fortunate enough to be involved not only in the, um, uh, the conversations where we're going strategically, but to take an active role in that. Um, and, and the other thing that I've been um, very blessed with is a great group of IT folks, which includes some very uh, excellent leaders who take on the day-to-day, -day, the operations, uh, much of uh, what I used to do, say, uh, seven to 10 years ago, I no longer have to worry about. And so I can stay on, on the, the business side. I can stay on the front edge. I'm much involved. In fact, we have physicians that are in our IT staff because the physicians and the nurses and the clinicians are integral to make all this happen. I want to ask you uh, about your philosophy on vendor management. You're a mid-sized organization. Um, what's your philosophy? Would you rather have sort of multiple vendors to keep each, keep each of them honest? Would you rather have one throat to choke? Talk about that a little bit. Well, I wouldn't say that we want one throat to choke, but what we want are a couple partner vendors, and we use that word very carefully. A, a partner vendor is somebody that's not just looking at the next sale, but they are with us all along the way to help us in any way we need, both in future and in current. And uh, we find that with HP, we find that with just a couple other vendors, and we do not have, and, and we're not able to with our size, to handle all of the multiple vendors there for all the multiple things. So we do want more within one, but we go a level above that. We want a true partner. Who's good at it? I mean, you can name names, it's okay. Unless you don't want to. Well, I'll tell you, Epic uh -huh. is one, and Epic is our EMR. That's the EMR. So they're number right, one in yeah. the industry, and they're, they're excellent. They really put us first uh, when, when we're in any conversation about our needs and our future. Um, we, have a, uh, we have a couple others that are a, a little less important to us, but I would say from a uh, technology standpoint, uh, HP and VMware is a very key partner to ours because we're engaged with their engineers and with their, their product futures because we're, we're very cutting edge. And they're, the, the one thing I do want to say that's extremely important for vendors to, uh, to invest in is the verticals. 
and for healthcare to understand us a little bit better, to understand that what we're talking about is life critical in everything we do because we're reliant on our applications and our, our information real time. Our providers do not have a paper record to go to. We could be in surgery, we could be in a very important uh, point in ED and we need real time, real quick. It's life critical that this stuff not only works, but it works continually with high availability. So Bill, you sound pretty progressive. You talk a lot about your customers. The one population that you haven't mentioned directly, or maybe I just missed it, was the doctors. Yeah. Talk a little about the role of the physician communities, and I presume that you've got maybe some that are in your system, some outside your system. You said you focus primarily on the, a primary care, so those are the guys out in the field giving checkups, um, dealing with wellness and some of these other more progressive things. How have they taken this technology, kicking and screaming? You know, we, we like to tease them all the time that they're not the most savvy, and, and clearly they're right on kind of the pointy edge of the spear uh, in the delivery you, of this stuff. We're very partnered with our physicians. In fact, they are part of our, uh, our strategy, they're part of our leadership, they're part of our IT leadership. I have a chief medical information officer, he's a physician. He, uh, he works with me side by side in our strategy. We have a clinical informatics team that has physicians and nurses that are really an extension of IT and it's, it's that glue between IT and the physicians. Everything we do has the physicians involved. If anything, our docs are very progressive and they're challenging us to keep up with where we need to go. And um, that's the only way this is going to be successful because they're the ones that are taking care of our patients. How about, um, we, we haven't talked much about um, regulation, uh, Affordable Care Act, things of that nature. How much of your time is that, in budget, is that sucking up? You know, people talk about the 70%, you know, keep the lights on, 30% innovation. Is, is that initiative, meaningful use, you know, et cetera, pulling you in the wrong direction, or is it the right thing for the industry, do you think? I don't think that we're doing anything that is specific just for compliance and regulation. Mm -hmm. We have to meet that. Right. But we find that our strategy that we put together for us, really the byproducts of doing what we're supposed to be doing anyways are meeting meaningful use. So we meet meaningful use because we're already doing the right things. Uh, there may be a couple things we've tweaked just to make sure that we comply with the uh, exact requirements. But you know, it's all about uh, doing the things that Meaningful Use was really about. The, the whole uh, healthcare uh, uh, reform is really not, even if we didn't have healthcare reform, we would have healthcare reform because the, the, the folks that are flipping the bill for healthcare are still, for the most part, uh, the uh, employers. They want it, they need it. They have to bring their cost structure down for healthcare. It's a business imperative. It's a business. Yep. So we have to be very cost efficient. We have to be very effective. We have to do great outcomes and quality for our patients and all that are byproducts for meeting the Affordable Care Act and for meaningful use. Bill Lukowski, awesome segment. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing the vision of your organization, really uh, paving new ground in, uh, in the healthcare world. Uh, quite innovative and extremely impressive, so thank you. thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Jeff Frick and I will be right back with our next guest right after this.